So we are very, we very strongly believe in this transparency and, and we are committed to being transparent. We are going to be putting more and more of our own data on our website and through the Chris website. But no, um, the Senate letter uh, is a form of oversight and PROMESA provides very clearly in Section 108 that we are not uh, subject to that type of direct oversight. That said, I actually believe um, the letter prompts us. I today literally walked in and it prompted me to say, you know, why don't we just report monthly on our, on our, uh, on our attendance and personnel? That's a great idea. So it, you know, what I, what I would expect is that within a reasonable period of time, much of that data will in fact appear on one or another platform. Um, because we are fully in support of that level of transparency. So uh, I didn't. Obviously, I don't agree that it's an overextension of the power of the board. Or I wouldn't have sent the letter. So I don't, you know, obviously, I think this is within, and o we only proceed to do things that we believe are within the mandate of Promesa. I also believe that there's no one, uh, neither the president of the Senate nor any member of the Senator House, that disagrees with the value of transparency or the the importance of public disclosure. So I think that you know, in a dialogue, we would all come to the same agreement as to how valuable having this information out there is. And I did look at the websites before, uh, and I can tell you that some of the data is there, and other parts of the data is not there. And I, I'm betting that you know that better than I do. Um, and what I think the request is about is standardizing the availability of information so that the people of Puerto Rico, so that decision makers can make comparisons, can use that information to make better decisions and to manage the resources that we have to, to, to manage. Are Again, I think, I think the government, I think Mr. Subvina and I, we, we all agree on how important um, visibility is with regard to the tax agreements and abatements as that applies to implementation of the fiscal plan and the revenue line, in particular the fiscal plan. And so I'm sure that we will find in this dialogue a way to reach an agreement as to how the board can fulfill its mandate which is ensuring that the fiscal plan, um, in this case the revenues of, in the budget, are indeed uh, uh, received and, and, are, and are meeting the fiscal plan uh, commitments, while at the same time respecting, of course, the confidentiality and the privacy of these agreements. So I'm sure that in a dialogue we will find a way to ensure that we're both doing our jobs properly. But, but I, I just have a quick question. I'll oh, deal real quick. In, 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 in seeking copies of these tax decrees, yes. I, well, was the idea of the board to actually go over them and make changes to them, or just to? No, in no. all cases, not uh -huh. just in this case, in all cases, in our contract review policy, the primary goal that we have is to ensure uh, consistency with the fiscal plan looking for the right word, to ensure consistency with the fiscal plan. I'm not looking to determine uh, conflicts of interest. I'm not looking to determine uh, legal issues. I'm not looking to determine procurement rules. Our goals, our mandate is simply consistency with the fiscal plan. 